Hey guys and welcome back to our how-to series. Uh, now I am super excited because I finally have a freaking 79 series to show you. I've been promising to this for everyone for like six months. So um, you're welcome, it's finally here. I am gonna show you guys how to do a bonnet. As you guys would probably know, I distribute Flexi Shield film. So I talk to my dealers all the time about how to do these bonnets. So why not make a video and make it easier for everyone? Um, these are one of the most complicated bonnets that we do in our shop, um, but also this car is a very common car in Australia. So you are, if you're doing four Bs with PPF, you're 100% going to see one of these. Um, we've done these successfully a couple of different ways, but this is the way that we like to install them now. So of course, this isn't the only way to do PPF on this bonnet, but this is how we do it. So stay tuned. So we usually have our vehicles in a booth, which obviously makes things so much easier as far as dirt in the air and dust, those sorts of things. This big boy is way too big to get into the booth, so we just have to wrap this outside, which is the first time in ages. So um, hopefully we don't have too much of a debris issue. I'm gonna show you how that we minimize that. Um, right now, we normally just spray the air to try and bring the dust down. Obviously don't do it in a windy environment. Um, we're gonna spray that and then we're gonna quickly try and final prep the bonnet and then lay the film down as quick as possible so there's minimal time for the dust to settle onto the bonnet. Um, we'll also go get Kayla to help us because the film's large and it's just simpler if we have three people to help lay the film. So we always do a double prep just because we are really uh, cautious of dust settling on the panel. So, and the key really is to try and do this final prep and lay the film as quick as possible. Okay, so you can see if you do have a UHF uh, aerial on a car, it really is so much easier, guys, if you have a third person just to help you bend it so it doesn't get all stuck. We try and make sure the film is wet enough, and it is. if it isn't, we just pull up without folding it back on itself to reduce the amount of dirt, and we'll spray water back under there. Now, usually we would stretch the bonnet in uh, all four corners and then sort of work uh, out to each side, but this is very different just because of the shape of it. We did try using a heap of tension and like glassing the film out and then squeezing it down, but the valleys in this bonnet is just far too, they're far too harsh. So we actually find it easiest if we first work with the film loose into this bonnet. The first step is gonna be back here. If you put too much tension, um, this is really difficult as it's quite a sharp curve. So you just sort of push this film around and you have to like kind of massage it down and bring it backwards a little bit. It sounds like a lot, but you're just trying to push that down with no tension in this rig. You can then squeegee that away. Be very, very thorough with your squeegee in this recess because uh, any sharp valley on a vehicle, you really don't want to be syringing it. Or of course, the, like there is a chance that once the film dries out, it may pop back up. It's normal that there's fingers over this bridge line here. Just be really careful and sort of massage them out. Now we just work this film to the back. There will be some fingers. Um, there has to be some fingers on this bonnet. It's just the shape. So we choose to put them towards the back. They're actually the easiest to get rid of. Now that we've done the last, um, now we've done that back section of the bonnet, we now glass the film and stretch it really tight so that we can work with the curvature and that front um, tilt downwards. The next step here is to just stretch this out a little bit. It's more like preventative stretch. So that way when I do go to um, stretch it down this way, it's, it's holding it outwards. If that's all loose, it will just twist the film forward. Now we used to, uh, we used to tack onto the headlights of this car, but the angle would wreck it. So now we've realized that as long as you stretch this section here and glass it out in one go, um, you won't get distortion lines. But if you try and stretch it and then it bounces back and you stretch it again, that's when you're gonna get issues with the material. So you have to spray lots of alcohol and then tack it hard the first time down. So as you can see, we just glass out that corner there really shouldn't be any fingers around this front section, only very tiny. And I'll correct them if it does bounce back. But you can see now this valley is looking a lot more manageable. There won't be fingers when I come to cut this out. Plenty of slip in the center of the bonnet and then alcohol right here. I'm trying to correct those fingers. Now, once we've done that, I'm happy with how that looks. We're going to 
squeegee down here and cut out the scoop. The scoop often changes the way the film's sitting because there's obviously a lot of tension in this area. So once we relieve that, the film will finger up a little bit. That's why I've left the bottom loose down the center so that we can um, readjust that once we get to there. When you're doing these areas or any relief cut in a bonnet or you know where you've got a lot of tension, it is important that you try to be smooth and not too jagged. Um, just then I had to snap my blade, so be sure you do have a sharp blade. Now, these ridges are something that really stumps a lot of people, but it's not as daunting as you think it is. You just have to understand that whenever you're working with PPF, you're trying to create a channel for the air and the water to pass out from. Um, air is usually the issue. You'll see if I just push this down, it will pop back up and it'll be a bit of a pain in the ass. So what you need to do is by me tacking this back section of the bonnet, that's meant that I can then work forward and I'll spray a little bit of alcohol here and then that will stop it from popping back up. So I simply take my alcohol and I spray it in this section here. That means that as soon as I pass over with my hand, I'm gonna try and tack that down quite quickly. Because that's alcoholed, now this film won't pop back up on me. Um, so much better than trying to do it in one big sweeping motion. And I now, you can always see, you get a little bit of fingers here which aren't the end of the world. I can work them back towards me. So that's a bit dry there. exactly why a booth is so important to have and controlled temperature because this is so much easier if we don't have to um, deal with the humidity here drying out the film. So here you can see I'll just push that over that edge. This is now safe to lift. I usually wouldn't have these fingers here but it's now safe to lift because this is tacked down and I can correct these. those fingers to the corner, no issues there. Cool, all right, so that's all down. Now this is a relatively uh, non-issue area because it's sealed, there's no dirt entering it, it's really easy access if there is any debris. So I'm not gonna continue here, I'm gonna go to the front back to work on that just because this area here is open there's more likelihood that um, dirt and things are going to travel to there so I'm going to go ahead and correct that and then I will come back to this when I'm ready and I can easily re-lift re that and wet it again if I need. So there was a finger here so I've just lifted that up so we can re-correct it. Sammy's there working away she's sprayed some alcohol in there so once we push this up we can squeegee it down. Much the same with those other valves, we're trying to push the air and water out and then work it down. So you can see here I've then alcoholed and tucked that all in. I'm going to come back and trim that at a later date. Once again, very important that you check for any uh, debris as you're going. And now that this area is sealed, I'm not worried about debris or water flowing and opening this back up. So I'm going to work back to the sides. So the dimensions for a 79 bonnet, we use 1.7 meters. Um, you can measure it to have some more, but you don't want too much excess on these bonnets. Otherwise you can have issues uh, with the film sort of like, just gets too much and it changes the angle of the material when there's too many bunched fingers. So just be cautious you don't have too much material. Now, I'm back to this area, so I'm lifting it up. You can hear our beautiful sirens here. I've lift this up and I can simply sort of just fold the material down. Um, these fingers are quite easy to disperse, so I'm not concerned about that. This front area is really where I want like no fingers or distortion, so I uh, focus on getting that down quite easily without any fingers. It 
would be so amazing if I was taller and I didn't need a ladder, uh, but we all do here, so to keep pushing that around. So I've just sprayed some alcohol in here. As you can see, I've got some fingers. So my, end, my, my goal here is I'm sort of pushing them down and making them into multiple smaller fingers. The last thing you want to do is bunch all of the material into one big spear. Um, it is then very hard to get rid of. So if you do have any fingers in any PPF install, you're really just trying to make them as small as possible and then push them along a flat surface where it's easy to get them to sit down and then you hopefully have a wrapped edge. I use an ISO and uh, isopropyl water mix. I think we're about uh, 75 milliliters to the liter for our tack solution. That works with our film, but you do have to adjust yours to suit. So that about wraps us up for the 79 bonnet. Um, we're gonna wrap the edges and obviously tuck it in around the scoop to try and make it as hidden as possible. The 79 bonnet uh, does have like a double lip under, so we sort of trim about one and a bit centimeters, like a little bit further than usual to wrap it under, just so it really grabs properly and it doesn't get caught on the lip. Um, but yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. If I've missed anything at all, or maybe you have some tips on how you do a 79 bonnet, we would love to hear it. We're always playing around with different ways to do PPF. Obviously, there's a million ways to get the same end result. Uh, so I would love to hear from you guys. Alternatively, if you are in Australia and you're doing PPF on Forbes in your shop, then please contact us because we have the templates for all of the sides of these 79 series 200s in the works. Um, so we always bulk our bonnets, but we have so many templates available that I can just cut out the material and send to you um, and you'll get a professional grade template with a lot less mucking around. Um, you obviously don't want to be debadging and taking off mirrors and things. So if you want a hand, please just give us a holler. But yeah, looking forward to it. Any suggestions on uh, our next install video, maybe a ram bonnet, something like that, hit us up and I'll be sure to get back to you.